Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about the AR57 upper receiver assembly that you can pin on to pretty much any AR15 lower. And in today's video, we're going to have to be uh, a little bit more careful about what we show you in the video simply because YouTube has changed its policies. Things like how to install the upper to the lower will now be banned under YouTube policies. How to actually load the weapon safely is now banned under YouTube's policies. How to unload it safely, all that stuff is now either in a gray area or is just outright banned under YouTube community standards and their new policies. So this video will be uh, edited and the full video that will show you all the ins and outs of this system will be posted over on Rumble, it will be posted on Twitter, and on Utreon. I'll put a link to all those video hosting services in the video description below so you can enjoy the full content of today's video. I love this firearm because it's uh, one of my favorite guns to play in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and this is gonna be a multi-part series where I'm gonna show you other firearms that I really enjoy in the video game, and their attention to detail is amazing in the new game. So the AR-57, which you see here, is nothing new. This is, I believe, a third generation upper, and it's one of those things that I think is actually really quite ingenious in its design. And what they've done is they've made a upper that would pin to pretty much any standard mil-spec AR-15 and 5.56, and it uses standard P90 magazines, which mount to the top of the firearm like this. The gun is just a simple, straight blowback operation, so that means the gun is super simple. The conversion parts are literally just pinning the upper to your lower, then using the buffer assembly that they ship with the gun to you, pin it on there, load the gun up, and start shooting. I've had really good luck with this particular one. Again, this is a third generation model. Jason had one of the earlier versions that had the fluted barrel and stuff and he had some problems with his and ultimately wound up trading it for something else but this gun is one of those things that i've always found to be of particular interest simply because it uses a standard ar-15 type lower so the ergonomics fire controls all that stuff are right there and perfect and it gives you access to a cool cartridge. Now the cartridge itself and its capabilities are for an entirely separate discussion, but in terms of how it interfaces with the AR lower, it makes for a very lightweight, well-balanced firearm. Now this one obviously has a full length barrel on it. It is not an SPR, uh, SBR, and it also has a suppressor on the end of the barrel. Back here, we have an Acro P1 micro red dot sight. And yeah, just a really, really cool system. Now I, I can't show you how to assemble the weapon and all that stuff when you buy the parts. So let me go ahead and take it apart for you here really quick and show you what the components of the system look like. So when you order your AR-57 upper, again, it comes straight to you at your house. It is not considered a firearm, therefore it's unregulated. And this is what you're gonna get in the kit. This is the upper receiver. This is the simple blowback bolt that comes with the gun. You do need to replace your buffer and it does come with the gun, but be sure you replace that. It has a big sticker on it saying, don't forget to put this in the gun. And then it comes with a magazine. I also like to thank our friends over at Federal who have supplied the ammunition free of charge to us for today's video. It is outstanding quality ammunition. Been shooting Federal since I was a kid. Outstanding stuff. And they also make ammunition for the United States military, the best military in the world. With that being said, putting it together is just like assembling a standard AR-15. So to put the kit together, I'm just going to throw the bolt in. Now the bolt is round, but it's slotted in the receiver so that it, when it goes in, you'll, you know, as you flip it around, you'll feel it hit that spot and it'll, it'll go in the proper way. All right, and it won't rotate once it's in the receiver. Now it will just fall out. You don't have the bolt head locking into the star chamber up there, so you wanna be careful. The thing will fall out pretty easily. You'll wanna take your standard M4 buffer, which this is one, get rid of that and put their buffer in, which is a very simple process. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pin the upper to lower receiver. Oops. That's your 
mag release. I always want to grab that because it looks like an ambi charging handle, but it is not. This is your folding non-reciprocating charging handle. So just like the P90, which uses this magazine, the magazine goes in, toe first in the front, and you just set it back here, give it a tap, she pops right in. Taking the magazine out can be done uh, very easily. It's easy to do by just grabbing it with your thumb like that. You'll see how the magazine lifts up and just comes right out of the gun as I wiggle on it. Now, one thing I don't really like about the setup is that these protrude ears on both sides, so it would be easy to bump this and dislodge your magazine just by bumping it into something. So that part, to me, perhaps making that folding would be an improvement, much like the folding charging handle over here. So all the 5.7 Glory started pretty much right here. This along with the handgun that FN developed many years ago. This is the FN P90. This is an SBR semi-automatic. I've had this since, well, generation one, which this gun is. And it's just a very cool gun, very much a very popular gun in video games as well. But this is where it all kind of began. And this is where the magazine comes from that the AR 5.7 uses itself. So... AR-57 is not a firearm, the kit that you would order. It can be delivered directly to your house. It's unregulated, and it will come with what you see here. And that's the upper. It's bolt, simple blowback. There's no gas key or anything like that, no locking mechanism. It is important that you use the buffer that it ships with, and then it comes with a magazine. Here's a standard M4 type buffer. You'll see it's slightly different big red sticker on it saying, don't forget to use me. So don't forget to use that when you pick the kit up. Now, this is what it would look like field stripped. And this is, you know, where you would pretty much go in terms of disassembly just to do basic maintenance. You don't really need to go any further than this. You can take the firing pin out of the bolt if you so desire, but that's up to you. Now, I would also like to uh, thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition for today's video free of charge. Federal is an outstanding company, been shooting their ammunition since I was a child, and I love it, love the company, love Federal. So, this is it. Putting it together, very simple. So let's say we just got done field maintenancing our gun, cleaning it, and we wanna slap her back together. We're just gonna take our standard AR-15 lower, put the buffer in there, Pop that sucker in place. Now, because the bolt just kind of floats around, flops around the receiver, I'm gonna put it in after I pin the two upper and lowers together. But you'll notice it has an extractor on the bottom and the plunger ejector is on the top. That's because the gun feeds from the top and ejects down the bottom. And it will eject through the magazine well of the standard AR-15 lower. All right, so. Now this is a little bit tight, it's a BCM lower, but the fitment is pretty darn good. Tim, what are you doing? What am I doing? Uh, just, just putting my pins in, that's all. Just, just making sure the pins are seated. All right. The P90 magazine is really cool because it stores the rounds like this in the magazine, but then it rotates them into this orientation so that they can feed. And it's a very simple, robust system that seems to work really, really well. So when you're loading the round, you can see how that bottom round kind of rotates and twists and lines up and stacks in the magazine. Really a rather ingenious design. You'd think something that's literally rotating around in the magazine to feed it would be unreliable, but I found my P90 and even this AR-57 to be extremely reliable firearms. This may look like a 30 round magazine, but it is not a 30 round magazine. This is not a magazine at all. This is a brass catcher. This has had the top end of it cut completely off. There is no spring follower or anything else in the body. It is just a empty plastic hole. People again use these to catch spent cases. Now I'm kind of curious how many rounds this thing will take if it'll take a full magazine before it causes a malfunction. Let's see.
Click no bang. <laughs> so you get through at least one magazine. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. Huh. Pretty nifty. I've heard it said far too many times that the FN 57 by 28 is basically a rifle cartridge. Well, while it looks like a rifle cartridge, like the 556 setting next to it, it is not a rifle cartridge. It has the ballistic performance of a handgun cartridge. It's just a bottlenecked handgun cartridge. Although it is cute and does look like a miniature 556. With that being said, uh, the range on it is limited. It's by no means as capable as 5.56 at extended ranges. But at 100 yards, we have a little steel plate that's about this big. It's a flapper tree designed for 5.56 cartridges that uh, I'm going to shoot with the 5.7. Now, the target is manufactured by Challenge Targets, and we do have a link down below if you want to check out Challenge Targets in the video description. So let's hit the reset plate, and you'll get an idea of just how much energy this thing imparts on the target, and then we'll hit it with a 5.56. All right, so that gives you an idea of how hard the little 40 grain 5.7 round hits. Now, this is a FM15, a Foxtrot mic, AR15 chambered in 5.56. This one came to us from Primary Arms. On top of it, have a Primary Arms micro prism. These things are outstanding. This is the one power version of it. It's about the same size as the red dot sight. However, it has an etched reticle in it and it has illumination. Easily one of my favorite optics out there, if not my favorite optic right now. Also available in three power, but this is the one power with the ACSS reticle. Gonna hit the same plate and this will give you an idea of the energy difference between the two. There we go. This is Jason's gun and it's zeroed for him. So there you go. That gives you an idea of the difference in terms of, you know, ballistic performance. Nothing scientific, but it gives you a good visual idea of the power differences between the two different cartridges. So if memory serves me correctly, there was a time when the AR-57 was sold as a complete package or just the upper to convert your existing AR to lower. Right now, they're not currently in production according to their website. I don't know if they'll ever be in production again, but Classic Firearms is just kind of notorious for being able to dig up old things that are kind of cool and bring them back out and get them on the market. The IAR Colt Upper, for example, just one day they popped up on the Classic Firearms website and I hadn't seen those things for years. And so these things are once again available through them, at least uh, as the recording of this video. Uh, they did have them in stock. So is it a neat conversion kit? Yeah, you know what? It's really, really cool. One of the most attractive things about it is, is if you're looking for a 5.7 in a carbine, Really, there aren't a whole lot of choices. The original P90 is close to $2,000. And a lot of folks just don't like the P90 for whatever reason. They prefer the AR uh, style firearm, and this certainly scratches that itch. And originally, I want to say that the uppers were right around 1000 bucks. Classic has them, I think, for right around $649. So not only are they currently available for a time, short time perhaps, but the price is really, really affordable, especially if you already have an AR-15 lower, you can just slap it on. So it's a great way as of right now to get into the 5.7 carbine game. Does it have some quirks? Absolutely. One of the things that I, I would change is the magazine system. You know, if it had like a little bow, like you take a look at the, the P90, right? So you have basically what equivalent uh, is equivalent to a magazine guide. See how it kind of keeps the magazine from moving left to right. And plus it's round back here, which helps line everything up. So the magazine just pops straight in. On this, you don't have anything guiding it and there's nothing here. It's not cut out round. So it, sometimes you just kind of struggle with it to get it lined up for those quick reloads. The other thing I would change, the magazine release. It's just kind of weird. Like you can just barely touch it and see, I've already knocked it out of engagement. So that to me is a liability. But again, not every firearm out there has to serve tactical purpose. You are allowed to own firearms that are purely fun to shoot. 
and not so tactical. And that is kind of where this gun falls in my category. It's a fun gun to shoot. A great way to enjoy the 5.7 cartridge. Prices on the ammunition are coming down. Our friends over at Palmetto State Armory are spooling up to load 5.7, and they promise to keep the prices really, really low. And I believe that's going to change the game for 5.7. Plus, we're seeing all sorts of different companies now from SHOT Show 2023 bringing out even more 5.7 products. Smith & Wesson has jumped in the 5.7 game with a new M&P, which we're dying to get our hands on. So 5.7 is finally starting to get some traction and go somewhere. Do I think it's the best self-defense cartridge in the world? No, far from it. But that doesn't mean it's not an outstanding cartridge. It doesn't mean it doesn't serve a purpose because it does. And it's just a lot of fun to shoot. So I enjoy this gun. I really enjoy it in the video game. If you enjoy seeing videos like this, talking about guns from video games like Call of Duty, let us know in the comments down below. If you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. Also, please check us out on Twitter, on Utreon, on Rumble, because we're able to post complete videos over there and we don't have to worry about whether or not we actually showed you how to load your firearm safely or not. Those are problems we're currently facing here on YouTube. So please check us out on those alternative sites. Again, links down below. You can also support us right here on YouTube with a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and you can support us on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Last but not least, swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you guys for 15 years of support and we will talk to you guys soon.